doing this A-level PE video, I want to talk to you about the theories of arousal. But first, the first thing just to mention is just make sure you know where this sits in your course. Um, for some of you, this will be an AS topic, and for others, it will be an A2 topic. If in doubt, just check on the mypexam.com website, and it'll make sh and I'll make sure you know clearly uh, where this sits in your course. But that being said, and that agreed, I want to introduce you to the first of our arousal theories. In fact, before I do that, let me actually define arousal. I'm going to do it in a fairly simple way. We're going to define arousal as a level of activation. Okay, and um, by the word activation, I could have written excitation. So I want you to think about this that it's like wakefulness, it's like being really highly awake, is high arousal levels, it's being really sharp, really alert. In fact, I really like the term alert, so let's add that. It's about being really alert. So this is alertness, and the part of our brain which controls our activation, our alertness, is something called our RAS, our RAS, and that stands for Reticular Activating System. Now, it's quite a confusing concept, the Reticular Activating System. Reticular Activating System. Let me make sure I write that in before I misspell it. Particular activated system, RAS. Now, the way I'd get you to think about the RAS is, you know, if you're somewhere right now sitting in a room and you're listening to me on your computer or your mobile or whatever, and suddenly a massive old bee enters the room through the window and starts kind of uh, uh, threatening you and you're worried about it kind of stinging you, you're probably going to be less and less inclined to be focused on this computer screen, okay? So the reticular activating system is gonna take your focus away from the computer screen and on to the B. We become alert in relation to that particular stimuli. But remember, a particular stimulus, I should say, but imagine a situation where an absolutely uh, giant B entered the room and that little B was there already, some massive, killer, humongous B entered the room exactly the same time as uh, that little bee was already in there, suddenly you wouldn't be at all focused on that uh, little bee. You'd be entirely focused on this big giant bee that could potentially eat you. And that's what the reticular activating system does. It focuses your attention on certain things away from others. Without any distractions, you'll focus on me and my voice. With a small distraction of a bee, maybe you'd start to kind of get a bit distracted and focus on whether that bee was going to sting you. And then if a human eat or man-eating size bee entered the room, suddenly that little typical bee wouldn't be so threatening to you. You'd only be worried about this giant thing which is going to gobble you up. So that's what the RAS does. It redirects your attention onto things which are relevant to you in that particular occasion. So it's this system within, actually just at the top of our brains, or just at the top of our spinal cord and our brain stem, it's this system that controls how alert we are. It also controls things like sleepfulness, you know, moving from wakefulness to sleepfulness. Okay, so that's one of the jobs of the RAS. Anyway, all that said, let's start to look at these theories. And the first one we're going to have a look at is what we refer to as drive theory. And this theory was presented, if I remember rightly, in the 60s by a researcher called Hull. Okay, and it's a relatively simple theory. We're going to criticise it to an extent. But he um, described the fact that arousal, and let me, uh, we've got arousal along here. So we've got increasing arousal moving from the left to the right. So we've got arousal um, is directly proportional to the level of performance. Level of performance. So if I say it's directly proportional, you know, really high performance is up here at the top look and really low weak performance is down here. Hull argues that arousal and performance increase proportionately. So they've got proportionate re uh, relationship. So we have a, a curve that looks something like that. And that is to say, at low arousal levels, okay, this might be low, 